Hello my quilting friends, Leah Day here with a new block for the Machine Quilting Block Party. This month we're learning how to piece a flaming pinwheel block. And if you're looking for the pattern, you can click right here to find it at leahday.com. So let's get started prepping up our fabrics so we can piece both half square triangles and flying geese units for this new block. So the first step is of course to prep up your pieces. We have a lot of red squares, that's fabric A squares. You wanna go on ahead and mark a diagonal line across them and match uh, two fabric A squares with two fabric D squares and stack them up. And then match two fabric A squares with two fabric B squares and stack them up nicely too. We're gonna to make a whole lot of half square triangles for this block. We're also going to need to prep up some rectangles and squares to make some flying geese. Now our squares are out of this light cream fabric and I had a little trouble marking this. I didn't want to mark it with my fine line blue pen because it would be uh, easily heat set and I need to be able to press this. So what I decided to use to mark my block was just a regular you know, Bic lead pencil, it's just a normal pencil, but I'm just marking it very, very lightly across that diagonal, as light as you can go and still be able to follow that line on both pieces. And the reason why I feel like this is okay is that we're marking it very lightly. We're gonna stitch over this and also have a fold. So I don't think that this mark is gonna show up at all within this unit. So with our pieces prepped up, let's get started first with our half square triangles so we can start our flaming pinwheel. So to piece our half square triangles, you wanna stack your squares really nicely together so those edges are just exactly on top of each other and then slip the pieces under your foot. And I'm lining up the edge of my quarter inch patchwork foot with that marked line in the center. So I'm stitching exactly a quarter of an inch away from that center marked line keeping it nice and straight. I'm gonna stitch all the way down. So now that we've stitched a line to one side, we're gonna rotate the block around, line up the edge of our presser foot with that marked line again, and stitch a quarter of an inch to the opposite side. And this is how we create half square triangles, so that for every two squares that we stitch through, we create two half square triangles. So the next step is to cut your two half square triangles apart, just cutting right along that mark line down the center. And then stop and give this a good finger press. What that means is open the seam out and use your fingertips to really open that and press it flat and then press it with a hot dry iron. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna open that seam, really reducing the bulk over it and give us a really nicely sized unit. So piece all of your half square triangles this exact same way and refer to your pattern for the size to trim these down to so you're ready to move on to the next step. So now let's start working on our flying geese units. We're gonna take our fabric C rectangle and our fabric D squares and you wanna line this up so that the top, the left side, and the bottom edge are really perfectly aligned. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and begin stitching here, right across, right on top of that marked diagonal line. So I've got my pieces nicely lined up and I'm just gonna stitch right onto that marked line. And this is a, honestly a little trickier than stitching a quarter inch away from a marked line like we do for half square triangles because you really want to keep an eye on that line, make sure that you're right on top of it. And that's why it's kind of nice to mark with that really thin, just regular lead pencil because it produces a really thin line. It's really easy to follow. There we go. So the next step is to fold over the fabric on the top block so that way the corners match up together. You know it's wrong if you fold it this way because you're gonna have raw edges along this side. So make sure you're folding it properly. You wanna give that again a nice finger crease, but be very gentle because that's on the bias, that's on the diagonal. Give it a good press. And we have three layers here. We've got the background rectangle, 
one side of our triangle and then the other side of our triangle. Out of all the pieces, the only one that's not needed anymore is this extra bit of triangle. So I'm gonna trim this away, leaving about a little bit less than a quarter of an inch to uh, one side of the seam. So you can see I've trimmed it fairly close. The reason that I don't trim the yellow rectangle is because that rectangle was cut to the exact correct size. And I know that it's exactly the right size for the block. By not trimming it down, I know that this unit's gonna come out the right size and shape. So now I'm gonna layer another piece on. And again, I wanna make sure that the diagonal is going from the corner to the middle. And I wanna line up the top, bottom, and this time the right side, making sure it's all nicely aligned. Then I'll take it to my machine and stitch again from the center to the outer corner. So the reason I like to start in the center on a flying geese unit is that it's really uh, nice and stable. And if you slip that underneath your foot and get it real close to the needle, it's a nice space to stitch along. When you hit this corner is the first thing that your needle uh, hits Sometimes it can kind of fall apart and get sucked down into your machine and just make a really big mess. So that's why I like piecing flying geese units this way. As I near that corner, I'm gonna slow down just a bit because it is a delicate area. You just wanna be kind of careful right there. And then I stitch onto, this is just a scrap, a two inch square that's been folded in half. And I stitch right onto that. Keeps my thread tails nice and cleaned up. I don't waste my bobbin thread and it keeps my foot at a nice height so that I can slip the next pieces under my foot really easily. So again, I'm gonna fold that top part of that square over to form a triangle, give it a good finger press and then hit it with my iron. And I'll trim away that extra fabric too, but that is how I create all of my flying geese units. So the next step is to stitch the pinwheel that's in the center of our block. So I've arranged my half square triangles just like this. I'm gonna flip over the pieces and stitch them together with an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So you wanna take a second to line this up properly. And then if you have the area where all the seam allowances are, flip it around so that you can start with that. So that that is the first thing feeding through your machine. And the reason I do that is because it's just a little bit big and bulky. But if I slide them right underneath my foot, right up against the needle, and that's the very next thing my needle hits when it goes up and down, then that means that it's gonna stitch it nice and accurately. And then all I need to do is just make sure that those edges remain lined up nicely all the way to the end. So the next step, of course, is to press our seam allowance open. Now I know a lot of people like to do a pinwheel differently, pressing the seams to one side, kind of getting a fan effect in the center with the seam allowances. My preference, even with this unit, is still to have the seam allowances pressed open because it's just gonna be easier to quilt. It's gonna be easier to stitch over and not have just such a super bulky area right in that center. So these are the two units. We're gonna match up that center seam, just fold it over, and take your time matching this up so that those seam allowances match up just exactly right. So I'm at my machine and I'm just gonna take my time pulling back on that top edge and taking a look, making sure the seam lines are matched up just right. Also making sure that that top edge is also in alignment. And then I pen. I'm placing that pen right before that seam line. Now I'll take a minute to also match up that edge all the way to the corner and then start stitching. And when piecing with a quarter inch patchwork foot, you just wanna keep an eye on that edge of the patchwork foot, making sure no fabric is extending beyond that edge. If you start having you know, fabric extending beyond it, that means that you're stitching with a little bit of a wide seam allowance and that could throw your unit off. So I'm lifting up and just making sure that everything's lined up nicely and my seam allowances aren't doing anything funky under the block. Carefully stitch over that bulky area. 
It's gonna be a lot of layers of fabric in this center unit. And that's okay, just as you're nearing it, whether you're piecing or quilting, just be mindful of it. Just slow down a little bit, take the foot off the gas, and it'll all work out fine. So the next step is to finger press and open up that seam allowance on your pinwheel block. Give it a good press. But whenever you flip it over, be careful when pressing over this area because it can kind of, um, you can get some marks and lines from pressing over an area with lots of seam allowances. So that is the center of our block and now we can add our units together to create our block layout. So you can see what it's gonna look like when you get it all pieced together. We're gonna place our flying geese units to the sides, top and bottom, and you wanna place these so that the flying geese unit, the yellow point is pointing outward. So that way you get this beautiful diamond effect. And then the next step is to place your half square triangles in all of the corners. And again, for these, you want the red triangle pointing outward. So there we go. All right, so the remainder of the block is really simple. Simply piece this together into rows, and once you get all three rows pieced together, then you're going to match up these seam lines and piece the rows to form your center block. That would be the point to put your ruler on top of it and make sure that it's coming out the right size. Definitely check your pattern so that way you know exactly the size the block is supposed to finish. And then the final step is to attach your borders. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish a flaming pinwheel block. So that's it for this video. If you'd like to find the pattern for this flaming pinwheel block, click right here to find it at leaday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.